We are living in an age of deception, an age of perversion. America is sending out its filth throughout the four corners of the earth, through its pornography, through the garbage that comes out of Washington, D.C., and out of Hollywood, all the mind control and the programming. And there has never been a time in human history where some person in a remote tribe in Africa and some person in China and Japan and perhaps Saudi Arabia and Afghanistan and Canada could all be tuned in at one time to the exact same experience. And the Satan is using this moment to bring about a universalism, to try to bring about a universal concept of thought and to bring about the mass perversion that we see right now that is being regurgitated all over the world. And it's filth is disgusting. America is confused about the role of a male and a female in sexuality. And it is spreading that confusion throughout the world into fragile young minds. And it is bringing about grievous damage to families all over the world. Therefore, I'm here to set the record straight. What does the word of Yahuwah, the Most High, the creator of heaven and earth, what does his word say? His word endures forever. He gave his word to Moses and the prophets. It is being handscribed to this very day as it has been for the last 3,500 years. There is nothing like it. And it has totally transformed our whole concepts of what a mighty one is and what law is and what justice is and what judicial systems must be. The Torah is the foundation of civilization as you know it. And now it is being undermined. What does the scripture say in Leviticus, Waikra, chapter 18, verse 22? And do not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. It is toibah. That is one of the most strong words in the Hebrew scriptures, toibah. It means putrid. It means disgusting. It means filthy. Therefore, this is a filthy, disgusting act. This is a legal document. Therefore, there was capital punishment that would take place in those days. But because we live in a time of lawlessness and the house of Yahuwah has been destroyed and there has been the great exile out of his land, the Torah cannot be properly kept. So therefore, the capital punishment is in the hand of Yahuwah. If man does not act, he will act. He will stone the earth according to the book of Revelation. He is going to burn the earth according to the book of Revelation and according to the prophets. And this is the penalty for witchcraft. So Yahuwah will have the final say and he will have the final laugh. He is telling you right now that your perversion is filthy, disgusting, and it is a disgrace. Do not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. Now, if you read all of the laws here, it even compares bestiality, incest, all types of sexual sins, and loves it all together. And it calls it toeba, which means filthy, disgusting perversion. Because one of these sins leads to another. Therefore, this homosexuality and this whole trans stuff and all this stuff, this, this sodomite agenda leads to what? Bestiality, pedophilia. It leads to everything. It's like opening up the very gates of hell, so to speak. And there will be no shutting it as soon as they have it open. Do not lie with a male as with a woman. It is an abomination. And do not have intercourse with a beast to defile yourself with it. And a woman does not stand before a beast to mate with it. It is perversion. Do not defile yourselves with all these. For by all these the nations are defiled, which I am driving out from before you. Thus the land became defiled. Therefore I punished it for its crookedness. You see, what you do in private affects the whole land. People say it doesn't matter. I don't care what they do as long as they don't do it in front of me. It does, it does matter what they do in, in closed secret chambers. Because the scripture says that the abomination of these perversions makes the land become defiled. Therefore, I punished it for its crookedness and the land vomited out its inhabitants. But you, you guard my laws and my right rulings and do not do any of these abominations. The native or the stranger who sojourns with you, because the men of the land who were before you have done all these abominations, and thus the land became defiled. So let not the land vomit you out for defiling it as it vomited out the nations that were before you. For whoever does any of these abominations, those beings who do them shall be cut off 
from the people. Very powerful. Cut off from the people. Yahuwah is not playing around. That means your very soul is cut off. You will not be remembered in the book of remembrance that Yahuwah is setting apart for these last days for those who meditate upon his name, contemplate his name, and fear him, and honor him in these last days. So you will be cut off from the land. Very powerful stuff. Very powerful indeed. So we'll go back over to Leviticus and read a couple more passages here. Whoever does these abominations, those beings who do them shall be cut off from amongst their people. And you shall guard my charge so as not to do any of these abominable laws which were done before you so as not to defile yourselves by them. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do you notice what it says here? I want to highlight this. And you shall guard my charge so as not to do any of these abominable laws which were done before you. Do you understand what this means? See, the ancient Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, all of those who were in the land, and of course we know there were giants in the land of those days, the Nephilim, the sons of Anak were in the land, the mixed hybrids were in the land, right? And we know that all this was taking place, but it says, do not do it according to these abominable laws. Why? Because they had codified this abomination into their law. That's what Sodom and Gomorrah had also done according to history. And that is what America has done. So if you think that America is going to repent, it will not repent. It has already written all of these abominations into law. It's the law of the land now with the sign of a pen. Barack Hussein Obama signed this with a stroke of a pen. What was originally states' rights, marriage was a state right, became the right of the federal government. And then a man could marry a man, a woman could marry a woman. So many places all over the country won't even marry you in the state buildings anymore because they don't want to have to deal with that nonsense. That's where we're at. And plenty of them, believe me, are going along with it because they're all a part of the agenda. That's not marriage. That's perversion. That's sickness. You're sick and you need a cure. You're perverted. That's what the problem is. It's abomination to Yahuwah. Yahuwah is not going to deal with your abominations any longer. And there's a whole lot more that could be said. Now, on top of this, they heap on the pride of this perversion. So let's go over to Proverbs, Mishle, chapter 6, verse 16. And I'm going to read to you so that you understand what Yahuwah thinks about all this. These six matters Yahuwah hates, and seven are an abomination to him, a proud look, a proud look. So if you commit your abominations, then you're proud. You have a proud look. You want the world to know about your disgusting filth. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands shedding innocent blood. A heart devising wicked schemes. It matters what you think inside. What you think inside affects everyone around you. It has power, the thoughts, the words. The scriptures tell us this over and over and over. You're made in the image of Elohim. It was words and ideas that brought all of this into existence. Of course, when you think, it's powerful. Of course, when you contemplate things inside your heart, it's powerful. Your heart is wickedly perverted always. This is what Yahuwah says. The heart of man is wicked. Therefore, he must write his Torah inside of you. The blood took place because the imaginations of the heart were wicked. The Tower of Babel was torn down because the imaginations of the heart were wicked. All of these things originate in the heart and mind. So you must stop them right there. It's a sin to contemplate these evil abominations. It says further that it says a lying tongue and hands shedding innocent blood, a heart devising wicked schemes, feet quick to run to evil, a false witness breathing out lies, and one who causes strife among brothers. My son, watch over your father's command. Do not forsake the Torah of your mother. Bind them on your heart always. Tie them around your neck. When you are walking about, it will lead you. The word of Yahuwah will direct your path through the spirit of Yahuwah. The wind and breath will direct you in these last days to be the light in the darkness is what it's saying. Do not forsake the Torah of your mother. Bind them on your heart. Always tie them around your neck. When you are walking, it leads you. When you lie down, it guards you. And when you have woken up, it talks to you. For the command is a lamp. The lamp for the foolish virgins. The foolish virgins need the lamp of Yahuwah, but they also need the oil. And the Torah is a light. And reproofs of discipline, a way of life. And the name of Yahuwah is the oil. The word Shem gives us the word Shemin. Shem is name. Shemin is oil. This is the connection. You must have the 
oil in your lamp ready to roll because we are in the last days and it is time. You need to have your staff in your hand, metaphorically speaking, and you need to be ready to go up the mountain to seek the face of Yahuwah. Yahuwah hates filthy perversion. He hates disgusting filth and he also hates a proud look. He hates a lying tongue. He hates these abominations. There's nowhere in the scriptures that says that Yahuwah loves sin or loves a sinner. The scriptures actually tell you that he hates the sinners. Yes, of course he would have them turn and repent. Yes, of course he does not delight in the death of the wrong. Yes, of course he sent his Messiah, the light, into the world so that men should be saved. But remember, they killed the light when he was, when he was amongst them. The world hates the light. It hates the truth. These wicked leaders promoting these lies. Barack Hussein Obama, he signed all that into law. And then with his Health Care Act, the Obamacare, it made it so you could have these trans operations for free. The government was subsidizing it all. And watch when the New World Order kicks into full gear to sway people to its path and to its net. It will pass out reparations to certain people. Yeah, it's going to get you in your money. It's going to deceive you with your money. You're, you have a digital currency to get that reparations. And it's not going to just be because of slavery. It's going to be because of this, all oh, this homosexuality, they call it, sodomite stuff, all this, this perversion. They're going to give it out to them, too. They'll give them incentives in the New World Order to, to, uh, to butcher their children and to turn them into eunuchs for the sake of the New World Order. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 18. This was the theme of the last lesson and the very name of it. But I want to read it again. This is a very similar uh, teaching, but I wanted to reiterate what I said in the last message. It says here, before destruction comes pride and before a fall, a hearty, a haughty spirit. We know that pride comes before a fall and the fall of America is going to be great. But don't just think that America is just going to fall. No, no, no. America has a role to fulfill in the New World Order. It is going to march on as the prophet for the New World Order, for the beast system. So America has a huge role that it's playing. It is going through a metamorphosis. It is changing. It is going to be a communist, socialist, sodomite new world order agenda you will barely recognize what is going to take place in the coming years proverbs 28 verse 9 i want you to listen to this carefully he who turns away his ear from hearing the torah the laws the instructions even his prayer is an abomination even his prayer is putrid even his prayer is disgusting so when that pastor says that you don't have to keep the laws and then he wants to preach against homosexuality he wants to you know look like a tough guy and preach against what is obviously evil but then he eats that swine first thing in the morning can't even wake up out of bed good without having to shove his face full of bacon shove his face full of pork and he breaks the sabbath and he does all this and yahuwah says that eating pork is abomination legally the torah is a legal document and that means the penalty for both things are the exact same thing so when greasy grace came in and you were opening up this door for people to play around with sin and experiment with which sins they maybe could get away with you opened the floodgates for all of this that you now see that is why the methodist church is having meetings right now using strange pronouns people who are pastors standing up saying i identify as they and them what does that even mean you're full of the devil and the demons is what it means remember who is they and them remember it was the man who was full of what legion he came before Yahushua with a thousand demons inside of him. And that word in Hebrew, by the way, for a legion and a troop is God. You can look it up in Isaiah 65, 11. You can read it in the Hebrew. You can look at it through your concordance. Do whatever you need to do. That's the word for fortune, troop, and a legion is God. So the man was full of God. He was full of a legion. He was full of the demons. And that's why he said that there was a multitude inside of them. When they say that they are they and them, that means that they have demons inside of them. Of course. You can see it in their faces. You can see 
see that the whole world is under a trance, under a spell. You can see that they have basically made a science of demonic possession in these last days. So that is why people have changed. You see the change. You can hear the change. You can feel the change. It's supernatural. It's spiritual. Yahuwah hates the filthy abominations, all of it, all of it. Perversions of all types, whether you're laying with your neighbor's wife, which is forbidden, whether you're eating that disgusting pork, whether you're laying up with a man like you are and you're a man, whether you're laying up with a woman and you're a woman, whether you're wearing clothes that pertain to the other sex, whether you're doing any of these putrid, disgusting abominations, bestiality, pedophilia, all of it. Yahuwah has set his face against you. You better repent because what's coming is going to destroy your very essence. You'll have no idea. It'll be too late. The snare is already set. It's already set for your very life. The only answer in these last days for all men who want to be strong and remain men and protect their families is to turn to the Almighty. Hear my voice, all you out there who are weeping and wailing and watching this perversion and you're grieved in your spirit. Turn to Yahuwah while you still can and seek his truth. The truth is in the scriptures, the harmony between what is called the Tanakh or the so-called Old Testament and the Brit Hadashah, the so-called New Testament is there. There's a beautiful harmony and the Messiah is the revealed truth. And he has told us that we must repent and believe in the good news, that we must hang up our perversions. Revelation, Hazon, chapter 22, verse 12. And see, I'm coming speedily. These are the words, words of Yahushua, the Messiah, the Nazarene, Hanatsari. See, I am coming speedily, and my reward is with me to give to each according to his work. He's going to give you your filthy payment back to you. All that you're doing, you think it's going to go without payment, it's coming back on your own head. It says that he's coming speedily to give each according to his work. I am the Aleph and the Tar, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are all those doing his commands so that the authority shall be theirs unto the tree of life and to enter through the gates into the city of the renewed Yerushalayim. So if you don't keep the commandments, I'm telling you out there, um, you better listen to me carefully if you want to protect the, the life of your young children, if you want to protect your wife, if you want to t protect your family. They're after your family, by the way. They have declared a war on your family. They have declared a war on normal sexuality. They have claimed, pro proclaimed a war on the scriptures. If you bought a Bible last year, if you bought the scriptures last year, you're on a watch list. According to the government's information they've released, what's going on in the world when you make the people who study the scriptures the enemy, but you make those who do evil the heroes? Woe to you who put darkness for light and light for darkness. Yahuwah will not be mocked. What you sow, you shall reap. To all of you hearing my voice, if this message resonates with you, there is a reason why you have tuned in to this channel. That is because Yahuwah is making his name known in these last days, and he is calling us back to his scriptures, back to the Torah, which are the instructions, and especially to his Mashiach, his Messiah, who is the word made flesh, and his name is Yahushua. You heard him called Jesus. That is not his name. His name is Yahushua. That's his name, and his name means Yahuwah saves. And you must understand this, because the name of Yahuwah will be the seal in the forehead of the 144,000. And the name of Yahushua will be the anthem of those who are redeemed in the last days. Call upon Yahuwah while he is near, and turn away from this putrid, disgusting filth. Turn off that filth. Men, get off of that nasty filth. Get that stuff out of your life. If you're still playing around and dabbling with that stuff, then you have not truly repented. And I'm telling you right now, you better repent. It's not just those sodomites out there that are committing abomination. So are you if you're doing that filth on the internet and looking at that garbage, degrading women and destroying their lives by continuing on that disgusting filth and promoting that disgusting stuff. Turn away from your perversion. Turn away from your pride. Turn away and rend your heart before the King of Kings and tear out your uttermost being before him with weeping and wailing. 
Because if you don't now, you will not enter into the new Jerusalem. You will not eat from the tree of life. My shalom and my love is with all of you out there calling on Yahuwah's name, children of Yisrael scattered abroad who are awakening in these last days and calling on the great name. Yahuwah be with you, may he make his face to shine upon you and be compassionate to you. Remember that you can also email me directly, messenger of the name at proton.me. And also remember that there is a book coming out soon about the pronunciation of Yahuwah's name, which contains information that I guarantee you have not seen anywhere until this moment that it will be released. And sure, some of it you have, but some of it I assure you, it is not very known about Yahuwah's great name. And so therefore, it is a great privilege to restore the correct pronunciation of our Father's name. Yahuwah be with you. Shalom.